Have you ever wondered what is the best open source limiter plugin out there? Today, we are about to find out. Hey, I'm Anfa. I'm an electronic music producer and sound designer. However, I only use open source software and Linux. In this video, I'm going to do a shootout of open source limiter plugins. If you've seen my X42, if you have seen my X42 DPL video, this is like a continuation to that one. If you haven't seen it, go check it out there. Okay, let's get started. Here is my test setup. In the top left corner, we're gonna have the user interface of the plugin being tested. On the bottom of the screen, there's a oscilloscope that will let us evaluate the differences between the original waveform and the processed waveform of our sound. In the top right corner, we have a spectrograph and a spectrum analyzer that will help us identify any harmonic distortion that may be occurring. I'm going to turn on my test sound, which is a synthesized kick drum. I've used Geon Kick, which is a fantastic open source drum synthesizer plugin. I'm going to be testing every plugin on its default settings first. You can see that we have a little bit of gain reduction and that's because the default threshold is negative one decibel. So let's see how far we can push this plugin before it starts distorting. All right, I don't see any difference in the spectrum. Let's bypass this plugin and see. Yeah, it's just all quieter. There are no extra harmonics or anything like that. But we can still reduce the release time. It's 10 milliseconds, let's go down. Okay, one millisecond, that's the minimum. Okay, it, I don't see any harmonic distortion, but we can still make the release time shorter. Let's go down. All right, nothing, this looks perfectly clean still, and it sounds perfectly clean as well. Yeah, well, we can also push extra input gain. Let's do that. 10 decibels, 20, 30. It still sounds perfectly clean. What the, what's going on? All right, um, there's also one setting. We can swap between sample peak and true peak detection. Let's enable enter sample peak. Okay, that doesn't seem to do much, but there's a tiny little difference in the waveform. You can see the red waveform is a tiny bit smaller on the high frequencies. If we zoom right in, well, actually zoom right in, not zoom right out. Uh, increase the hold. This is our the start of our kick. If I bypass, that's what we get. If I unbypass, okay. So threshold is one, input gain is zero. This is the default. Now we lower threshold. Just it stays clean. <laughs> It's crazy. It doesn't distort, doesn't crush anything. It's just, it's awesome. I love it. And X42 DPL, which is what we're testing right now, is my go-to limiter at the time of filming this because it's just, just great. It's clean, it's simple. I love it. All right, let's check out the next one, which is LSP Sidechain Oh, it's a sidechain limiter. No, 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 we don't want LSP limiter mono. There's also a stereo version. They, they are exactly the same, pretty much. Let's just let it go. Okay, so on default settings, it already does some limiting and we can see it's, I feel like the sound is a little bit more high frequency intense. Let me zoom out and We'll see what's going on. Oh, 
Okay, so we have quite a lot of limiting by default. And as you can see, the green, I haven't said that, but the green waveform is the original. The red waveform is the process signal. And when they overlap perfectly, it's yellow. So you can see that the start of the sound is untouched, but then we have some limiting on the bass tail. That's why it sounds to me like the overall sound is more high frequency heavy. Yeah, and if I bypass it, you can see that the high frequency, the low frequencies are peaking higher. Let me now unbypass it. Yeah, we definitely have a few decibels less of the bass. Okay, so these are the default settings. Uh, what can we do to like give it less of a release? Maybe here. Oh, great. That doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe this auto something thing will help if I'm lowering this. Okay, yeah, that's... But now I can hear some distortion. Can you see we have extra high frequency content in here? It's very subtle, but you can see we have like tiny little waves in here that are not present in the original signal. There's definitely some distortion. I can see that the waveform is out of shape. All right, maybe we can enable oversampling. Let's go, I don't know what, why half and Oh, oh, that makes it worse. Okay, it's way more distorted now. What if I make the release higher? Okay, that doesn't do anything. And this? All right, but still I can't get my tail to be as loud as I want. Maybe I lower the threshold, Let's see what happens. Oh, we've got some nasty, really nasty stuff happening, very random as well. It has automatic boost. All right. What if we disable this ALR thing? Oh, well, oh, that's no good. Okay, what the he what's going on? What if I disable oversampling? Okay, no, full oversampling? Okay, I don't really want my limiter to do this, you know? What What is going on? Okay, that's... Look ahead, five milliseconds. You can see that it's properly reporting the, the, the look ahead delay in here. Ardor gets this value and it compensates. That's why our waveforms are in line. They are overlapping. So there's a tiny difference. So maybe it's not reporting its look ahead delay perfectly accurately. Like there's a tiny bit of misalignment between these waveforms. Okay, I, I, I th I'm afraid getting this the same clean result I got from DPL from X42 DPL is gonna take me a lot of time, or maybe it's even impossible. I don't know. There's also dithering. Can insert. Can insert extra noise to, to limit the no the, the dynamic range. Interesting. Alrighty, so that's LSP limiter mono. It has a lot of settings, but I wasn't able to get as clean and as easy to use results as in X42 DPL. And I had some weird bass attenuation by default, which I couldn't really get rid of. Just a note, um, there is an extensive manual for all the LSP plugins. So probably if I read up all of that, I would be able to get decent results. Or it's just broken. But do I really want to spend this much time when I can just use X42 DPL? Not really. All right, so the next plugin in our shootout is Calf Limiter. Let's go. Oh. What? Why are the waveforms misaligned? Ah, we have five milliseconds of look ahead latency, but we have no latency being reported to Ardor. 
What if I turn it down? All right, okay, that, that explains it. So right off the bat, this plugin does not report its latency to the host, which is not great because that means the latency compensation of Ardor, which is a fantastic feature, is not gonna work unless you manually specify it here. I wanna have... Yeah. Okay, I don't know how many samples. Okay, I could just try and eyeball it. Okay, I eyeballed it. 250, 234 samples seem to be five milliseconds. Great, but that's not convenient to do it manually. <laughs> All right, now we have aligned waveforms, we can compare them better. So by default, this limiter does not introduce any gain or any limiting. And we can go down with that. Oh, we have a gain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? Okay, oh, they, there's auto level. What if I disable that? Okay, all right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks clean. Let's go auto level. Mm. Okay, so now we're trying to reach zero decibels. However, okay, I can hear, is that the some distortion? I don't see any distortion on the waveform, to be fair. I think the only distortion I'm hearing is this little tiny sharp angle that is just being um, exaggerated by of the gain we're getting from this limiter. Let me double click and disable that. Okay, what, what if we push it hard? Because now it looks good. I don't see any distortion. If I bypass it and unbypass it, I don't see any change in the shape of our frequency response, which is great. That's what I want from my limiter. If I want something else, I use a clipper or a saturator, whatever. From a limiter, I want clean sound. <laughs> However, I think we get a bit of overshoot. As you can see, the output is a bit higher than input. I'm not entirely sure. And do we have some, are we getting some clipping? I don't know. There's something called ASC. It's probably similar to what LSP had, which is like automatic alteration of the release time. Oh yeah, if I disable that, it starts to churn on the base. Okay, and I can manually make the release longer, but well, you know, half a second to get a clean base is way too much. Can I get this to distort badly? I guess look ahead also makes the attack shorter. Yeah, exactly. So you can actually use this limiter as a clipper if you really want. Not passable with X4U DPL, so if you need this kind of thing, it's great. Though, okay, with the ASC, also there is this little knob, I don't know what it does. Okay, I, I'm not sure. You know, I am not sure if we're not getting a little bit of harmonic distortion. And actually, we must be, because look at this. Okay, I have to make this r release longer. If you remember, with the X42 DPL, we could have release at one millisecond and still have perfectly clean bass. But not with Calf limiter. Uh, but it can do clean. It can do a clean sound. You just need a longer release and make sure the ASC, whatever it is, is on. What about the oversampling? All right, okay. I see it turning down the, the waveform on the high frequency content. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a better view. Oh, and our time misalignment is really bad at this. Can I, okay, I need to twiddle, twiddle this thing. Uh, can I just change this by one sample at the time? 33, 35, okay, 36. All righty, 236 is 
perfect 4.95. Okay, never mind. We are all, we have an overlap. That's good. Let's see what happens if I start oversampling. Oh, it increases the delay. Oh, that's weird. Ah, oh, that is very strange. But we are getting lower peaks, so I mean that's good. <laughs> that's that's weird. Maybe maybe all the plugins have extra latency when you enable oversampling, but they report that to the host so it's corrected automatically. And here I just need to correct that manually. By the way, you can see that we have like perfect analog representation of the signal because <laughs> there is um <laughs> <clears throat> there is way less samples in this audio signal than there are pixels on the screen. <laughs> okay, so that's Calf Limiter. It's uh, it can be decent. Not gonna lie, it can do it can do nice. All right, now it's time for Fast Look Ahead Limiter, which is a very simple plugin that I've been using a lot in my LMMS days because it's easy. It does the job. And it's available in the LATSPA format, which was the only thing that LMMS really supported. I believe it was even bundled with it. Let's listen to how it sounds. Alright, so... Just adjust it. Hold time. Right off the bat, we can see that the plugin reports its latency correctly. And I believe that's 5 milliseconds. I've read it on... I have read that on the plugins manual page some a few years back. So by default we have no change whatsoever because the limit is at zero decibels and my sound is not going above that. And the release time of half a second, which is very long. I'm going to lower this, see what happens. All right. We have clean limiting going on. That's nice. We have gain reduction metering as well. There's also input gain control. Let's see what it does. Okay, it works. We still have a clean output. I'm not sure if we're not clipping a little bit though. And you can hear that the control are not interpolated there is zipper noise when I move this but well you're not really supposed to automate your limiters input gain I think I mean you could but uh, yeah not a deal breaker by any means I'm gonna reset that okay I can shift click let's see what happens if I lower the release time okay, so maybe give it some input gain and then limit it to negative four decibels so we have like um, very comparable levels on the base tail and now it's lower the release and see what happens oh i can hear some distortion whoa all right i think there is a little bit of crunching going on so I think mostly it's uh, this little thingy here that is being emphasized. I don't see a lot of waveform distortion though. Yeah, I think it's pretty clean actually. And for this short release time... Yeah, I think it's doing pretty well. Alrighty, so that was Fast Look Ahead Limiter. Now let's take a look at MDA Limiter. Let's hear it. Ouch. Okay, this, this is pretty much a saturator soft clipper at this point. Um, and by default, it's pretty harsh. Whew, okay, we have threshold at 0 0.6, whatever that means. I'm gonna turn it up. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. So it's 0 0.5 new, no. How do I get it to not, oh, all right. We don't have, 
Moving it up is... Oh, what the hell? Oh, it's really hard to control. I can't really have it not do anything. <laughs> we have attack. So if I increase the attack, it's going to let through the peaks, which is kind of bad for a limiter. It has no look-ahead delay, so... Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's bad. I mean, it's awesome if you want distortion. Mm. Release at zero attack. I mean, it's a pretty cool characterful distortion, but that's not a limiter I would use to limit something. I would use this to distort something. Also, we have knee, hard and soft. Let's see. Ooh, now we're talking. What if I lower the attack? Okay, we got a little bit of distortion. You can see that our frequency content is gets kind of messy. Now I bypassed it. Now you can see all these weird shapes. Like there's some harmonic distortion going on for sure. Plus I can hear it. All right, but this is already better. Yeah, I have no idea what are the millisecond values for this. This sounds pretty clean, but I had to do so much work. I get the same result with DPL, with X42 DPL in just like two clicks. Not worth the time in my opinion. <laughs> All right, so that was MDA limiter. Now let's listen to tap scaling limiter. I've read that this limiter is supposed to detect zero crossings and scale down every waveform cycle between zero crossings. So it should be rather clean, I guess. I have been using a bit in the past, again, in my LMMS days. It has just two controls, limit level and output volume. It has some look ahead delay, apparently. And that probably is like 15 milliseconds. Let's see what happens if I limit the level. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Oh. Something is definitely not working as intended. I think the zero crossing detection is totally off. And that's what, what's going on. I don't know. I don't remember this plugin sounding like that. So I think it's just broken. Not sure why. And I don't have any other version of it. Mm, yikes. All right, so we can't really test tap scaling limiter because it's borked. Too bad. Let's now take a look at ZA Maxim 2. It's a plugin from Zam Audio. Let's have a listen. Hmm. Interestingly, by default, even though our threshold is at zero decibels, we have some gain reduction. You can see that's kind of strange. Even though it doesn't show us any gain reduction, it definitely does some of that. All right, if I reduce the release time to zero, it doesn't. Let's go with the defaults. All right, so shift click resets the default. Let's lower the threshold and see what happens. All righty, that's clean. Except for this little click here, which is, of course, present in the source signal. And it's just exaggerated. Let's see if I lower the release. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. This is quite weird. We have some distortion going on in here. That's not great. But, well, that's quite extreme. Also, the ceiling. Ah, so this is actually the, le the threshold. It's kind of strange. It, 
this seems to kind of follow the waveform shape, so maybe I'm judging it too hard about this. All right, so the ZAM limiter seems to be pretty okay. It's a little bit strange. And increasing the release time to 24, 25 milliseconds seem to be giving us a cleaner sound overall, but it's doing good. It has a nice clean display. I don't see a reason to not use it. So again, I think I prefer X42 DPL. There's just three plugins left. And the first in line of these is Z-Limiter SP. It's a plugin bundled with Z-Rhythm, I believe. Let's hear it. So that is the default settings, which is nice. It doesn't create anything, any change, which I like. I think a limiter on default settings should be transparent. So there is no difference whatsoever. All right, let's lower the threshold and see what happens. Okay, that is kind of strange. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's because of the attack. You can see that we have limiting going on, but it's so slow. We would totally lose this threshold, sorry, this transient. So that's not a limiter in my book. What, what happens if I go all the way? All right, yeah, the, the, you can see that the initial peak is still perfectly loud. Like there is no change whatsoever. It's the same volume and it just gets turned down as it goes. What happens if we lower the attack time? Okay, no change. Nothing changes. That is strange. The attack knob doesn't seem to do anything. I will reset it to defaults. All right. limit again okay we we still have this whole transient going through unaffected that's not a limiter in my book and the attack control does absolutely nothing what does the release control do can we have something happen with the release okay we can get it to distort yep <laughs> not great I, that's not a great limiter, I would say. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, now the... Oh, what the hell? What did just happen? Wait, so... Does attack and release knobs controls like push and pull the same control just in opposite directions? Oh, now the attack control does something. Wow. Let's lower the release. Okay. No, but not, now that's not doing anything. Oh, and now it's just... All right, this is, this is baffling. I have no idea what this limiter is doing, but I think it's just completely broken at this point. So, yeah, I don't recommend using this limiter at this point in time. Uh, let's see what happens with it later. Rightio, just two plugins left. And this one is called Simple Limiter, in parentheses, Peak Envelope Tracking. Let's hear it. All right, it's transparent by default. I like that. I'm not sure why the threshold is at one or can be higher at four, okay. Let's go to negative. Whoa. Oh, that's bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's like the worst possible thing. It distorts like crazy. It's also very inconsistent. You see, every hit is different and it lets the transients through. All right, we can change this times. So let's change the attack to zero. Release to longer. Okay, but now it doesn't do anything. What are the... 
units of this threshold parameter. Um, Okay, that still lets the initial transient through, which you can see. Yeah, yeah the, the first three cycles of the waveform are almost unaffected. And then it just distorted it to shreds. Nah, not recommending this, this limiter at all. It's way too simple. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, from this to this. I mean... It might be really cool if you want uh, some unstable distortion, don't get me wrong. It's doing some re interesting distortion things, so if you're going for some really distorted stuff, yeah, try it. Might be great. But not for limiting. And the last plugin is really a joke. <laughs> it's called Hard Limiter. And it's not a limiter. Let me show you why. By default, it's transparent. Fantastic. But let me lower the dB limit. <laughs> it's a clipper, yes! <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nice clipper. I mean it's a simple clipper, but it does the job. Clips. So if I want to like cut off this little transient here. It's gonna do a nice job. And I am actually using this plugin quite a lot when taming drum transients because it gives me quite a lot of control over the clipping and that's because of the residue level. It's a clipper, but it gives you some extra options, which is it lets you specify how much of the processed signal comes through maybe none at all, and how much of the residue comes through, which is the signal that you're actually chopping off. So, let's limit this, or clip it rather. And now if I turn down the wet level to zero, but turn up the residue level, we are left only with the cutoff peaks, which is really useful for judging by ear what you're doing to your sound. And I often do it that way and then adjust the level to hear them only affecting my peaks and not the tail. And when I hear just a click for my kicks, I know I'm just clipping the transients and not the tails. And then I can go back. And also, because we have this residual level, we can use it as a dry-wet control. So we can move that up and what happens is we get some of our signal back. Let's zoom in and see that up close. Yeah, so now if I clip it, you can see our signal is being clipped. And mind you, these weird interpolations are there because we have very little audio samples to work with at these frequencies, really. And all this rippling is also just the Gibbs effect, which happens naturally if you have a band-limited digital signal reproduced. Or any band-limited signal at all. So that's not an issue of this plugin. So if I now increase the limiting, you can see we are nicely clipping this. But if I go with the residue, you can see I'm getting back some of my signal. Of course, we still have sharp corners in here because the knee is perfectly sharp. So this is not a saturator. It's not a soft clipper. It's a hard clipper. And you can still hear, even with a lot of residue, even at this level, I can still hear all the harsh distortion, which is very, very quiet. And if I disable the wet, you can hear it, hear it in all its glory. What this also does is it lets you use this as a hard gate. So instead of clipping the, the peaks off, you're clipping the, the other stuff. You're clipping everything but peaks. Which is also an interesting effect. 
So yes, the hard limiter is not really a limiter, but it's an interesting plugin that I have in my toolkit and I use it at times. That's all I wanted to show you today. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something and found this interesting. Maybe I've inspired you to clip your sounds or limit them cleanly. Who knows? I would also like to thank all the fine people who are supporting my work financially. Thanks to them, I can be doing this instead of other work. If you, dear viewer, would like to join them and help keep this show going, please go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa, where you can support me with a monthly donation. Thanks. Also, if you'd like to get some help, get to know a community of people using open source software for music production, using Linux, please join my community chat at chat.anfa.xyz. This is a self-hosted Rocket Chat instance, which is similar to Slack, but it's, you guessed it, open source. There's also a Discord server, and you can find it in the Newcomer Info channel. There's a link in Rocket Chat as well. So Discord is proprietary, so I'm recommending Rocket Chat. Oh, and if you would like to learn more about the X42 DPL plugin that I've been praising so much in this video, check out the video I made just before this one, where I go in depth with this awesome limiter plugin. Now go and distort the shit out of it. Or not. Whew. It's getting kind of hot in here. Where's my water? Oh, I don't have my water.